Jim, nice to see you. A very uh, short summer indeed it's been. Uh, training restarts <laughs> in a matter of days. Uh, how much of a squad have you got in place? Well, we've retained uh, quite a few of the, the squad from last season. There's a number of them still under contract, obviously. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that every single one of them will be at the club come the first league game of the season, but we've got a very healthy group uh, to start back with. And obviously, you know, throughout the last few weeks, we've been speaking to some new recruits as well and hopefully have a bit of positive news for the supporters in the, the coming days. Yeah, that's kind of preemptive. My next question, it seems all quiet on the Western, uh, on the Western front, on the signing front. It, just how close are you to bringing new guys in? Well, we've been having a lot of contact with agents and players and we've got a very long list of targets that we're, uh, we're wanting to bring to the club. Um, you know, it's a, a different type of recruitment for the championship as opposed to the to the Premier League. Um, but the players that we've identified are ones that we believe are capable of enhancing the group and, you know, making us competitive and making us strong enough as a squad to go and win the title next year. Yeah, so very much horses for courses get a good quality squad in that's good enough to win you that title and is good enough to withstand the pressure of going for the title. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, I want to have good quality options in every position and I want there to be real competition for places in the team next season. I want to, uh, I don't want any player to feel comfortable in their position in the team. You know, if anybody is not performing to the level that's expected, then they need to, they need to know that there's someone waiting in the wings to take their place. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a healthy way to approach it. Um, there is going to be a certain level of expectation on Dundee United next year. We are going to be the biggest club in the league, you know, without being disrespectful to any of the opposition. You know, the, we will be everyone's favourites before the ball is kicked, and rightly so. You know, we are um, a club of real rich history. Uh, in my opinion, a club that should be in the Premier League. But as we know, you've got no divine right to be in the Premier League. You've got to earn the right. And, um, you know, we've got an opportunity next season to, to make amends, to put things right and um, to make sure at the first time of asking we get this club back into the Premier League. As far as moving players on, Jim, goes, um, are you still to have a few more difficult conversations or have you moved, moved on players that you want to move on? Will there be more departures? Uh, there's discussions going on in the background. I'm not really at liberty to name names at this moment in time, but there are um, discussions going on at the moment with certain individuals and you know in the days and weeks ahead um, no doubt we'll have a bit of more information for you guys. How, how hard is that as a, as a manager you know to have to, to break the news look you're not part of my plans you, you need you need to go elsewhere? Um, I don't really find it all that difficult to be perfectly honest with you I mean I, I make decisions um, what I feel are the best for the club to be honest with you, you know it's Never personal. There's, uh, you know, the guys that I left go there that were out of contract. There's not one of them a, a bad lad. It's just we wanted to go in a different direction, and they fully understand the reasonings behind um, why I came to that decision. You know, as a manager of a football club, you've got to make hard decisions, tough calls, but those decisions have got to be made for the right reasons. And every decision I make while being manager at Dundee United will be in the best interest of the football club. Obviously, some quality, experienced players that you would love to have on board next season. Um, Jamie McGrath is obviously a name that springs to mind. I mean, what is his situation? Is there any chance of you bringing him back for next season? Uh, listen, Jamie's a player that everybody mentions because I've worked with him uh, so closely. At, you know, obviously St Mirren, and, and, and you know, I thought he finished the season quite consistent toward the end of the campaign. But you know, Jamie's not our player. It's as simple as that. He's on the contract at Wigan, and you know, I'm going to focus on the players who are here right now who are under contract with the club we're going to focus on the new targets that we're looking at and if something happens later on in the window with regards to loan players then you know we can have that conversation but right now it's about the players who are here who are committed to Dundee United who are determined to get this club back to where it belongs. Obviously Tony Watt is contracted here until 2025 what, what does the future hold for him? Is he still a player you want, you want to keep on? Yeah, Tony is under contract for another season. Um, Tony had a difficult season on a personal level last year, probably didn't get enough game time. Ended the season with a serious injury at St Mirren while on loan and is now currently recovering. Um, 
with his rehab uh, from that injury. He's probably six weeks away from um, doing any real physical activity. But, uh, you know, Tony, two years ago, is a, was a prolific goal scorer. Um, and if we can get that Tony Watt back available and playing for us, um, I would imagine Tony will get plenty of opportunities to score goals in the championship. And it's, you know, goals that win games and, and that's what we need. So if Tony is committed and, and wants to be here, then um, I'm very much happy for him to be around. So basically you'd love Tony to be here. He'd be a huge asset in the championship charge as, as long as his head's in the right place. Well, it's not just Tony. Tony's a good lad. You know, I, I know him uh, on a personal level, having played against him over the years, uh, you know, competing against him as a player and obviously managing teams against him as well. I know the talent that's there, but, um, you know, I said to every player in one of our final meetings last season, um, I only want players who want to be here and who are fully committed to Dundee United. And if there's anybody out there with any doubt in their mind that they don't want to be a part of what we're trying to achieve here, then... Just pick up the phone and let me know. I won't be difficult to deal with, believe me. So, uh, you know, we are trying to, we're trying to build a, a group of players with a real positive mindset. We're trying to completely change things behind the scenes to make sure that the structure of the club is better than what it has been previously. Uh, and that's my job as a manager, to continue to try and make improvements. So if there's people currently at the club, under contract, don't want to be here, we won't be difficult to deal with. Stephen Fletcher's one guy who you could see his attitude was there for all to see. Brilliant attitude, trying to play on with a you know a torn groin. That just kind of sums the guy up. How how key a role could he have next season? How keen are you for uh, for him to stay on? Listen, Fletch for me was one of the best number nines in the Premier League last year. And um, you know if we can keep him here, and the conversations that I've had with him have been very very positive. He's very much on board with what we're trying to do. I think we've worked well, both me and him, on a personal level. Um, you know, he knows I've got the utmost respect for him. He's, uh, you know, still, you know, he's getting on in age, but still such a fit and top pro. Great example around the place. Brilliant for all the younger kids to look up to. The way he trains every day, the way he performs out there on a match day. You know, he gives absolutely everything, and that's all you can ask for as a manager. And I think Fletch in the championship, OK, it's probably not a level that he ever anticipated being involved in because of the career that he's had. But I think, you know, him in the championship next season will be by far the best striker in the league. I think he'll get lots of opportunities to go and score goals. And, you know, if we are able to keep him around here and encourage him to, to be part of this journey with us, then I think we'll be in a great place for it. Just in general terms, obviously, everybody hurting very, very badly at a relegation. How, how tough has it been to just make sure there's no doom and gloom, you can't dwell on the past, you've got to look forward now? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not going to try and brush anything under the carpet for what happened last season. You know, I've had lengthy meetings with Luigi Capuano, with uh, the owner. Um, you know, I've, we've had a, a long review on the season as a whole. Um, I think the period that I was in was actually a huge advantage for me because it gave me a real opportunity to not just assess the current squad but to also have a look at lots of different departments within the football department and how they were working and um, you know we've had quite open and honest conversations about the improvements that we believe we need to make and some of those uh, changes that we're looking to make will be announced in the in, in the coming days and maybe in the early part of next week. But as I said, you know, one of your previous answers uh, or questions, you know, every decision that we make going forward will be uh, in the best interests of the club. And um, you know, we're very apologetic for what happened last season to our supporters. Um, we're very open and honest, and we're all willing to take our. Uh, share of the blame and the responsibility for what happened and I accept that that cannot happen again but we're not going to dwell on it as you said you know we're going to be very optimistic and very positive about the future we've got a terrific youth academy here as well um, that's a huge part of my job going forward is to try and bring them um, through the, the, the system here to make sure that that pathway is there for some of the good young talent to get opportunities and I think being in the championship might be a blessing in disguise for some of those younger members of the squad because albeit they maybe weren't ready for Premier League football, some of them are certainly ready to go and perform in the championship and I think that experience of playing 
senior football in the championship will benefit them greatly going forward. So what happened last season happened. We, uh, we can't do anything about it now. All we can do is learn from it and make sure that those mistakes that were made don't happen again. You know, as I said, I'm very optimistic and very ambitious about what the future can hold for Dundee United. And how happy are you, Jim, with the budgetary assurances that you've been given as you seek to implement these changes? Because obviously it's more difficult financially. Everybody's got to tighten the belts a bit um, moving down the division. Yeah, I mean, look, the chairman has been brilliant. Um, you know, he's backed the club to the hilt from a financial perspective since taking ownership of the club. And um, he's given me all the reassurances that I need um, in terms of making the funds available to, to try and strengthen the squad and add some real quality. So for that, I'm very grateful to him. Grateful to Luigi Capuano for all the support that he's given me in the chief executive position and to the board of directors as well for, for putting their faith in me, for um, you know, giving me the opportunity to be the manager to take this club back to the Premier League. And as you build up towards the new season, any plans for a, a, a training camp anywhere? No, we'll, uh, we've got one of the most beautiful settings in Scotland up at St Andrews, so um, there's no need for us to be going abroad uh, anytime soon. We're going to have a really tough pre-season on the cards for the players when they get back. You know, I want the players come that first competitive game of the season to be in the best shapes of their careers. And um, yeah, we've got great facility up there at uh, St Andrews University and very grateful to all the guys up there as well for the support that they give us. A number of players that have been out on loan um, last season, some of the younger ones you've just been speaking about, yeah. um, like Logan Chalmers, Chris Mulgrave, mm -hmm. Declan Glass. Have you had an opportunity to, to assess what they have to offer, or is that something that's going to have to, to be looked at in more depth when they come back to, to training when it starts next week? Well, Declan Glass is a player that I've always admired, you know, and I think his career over the last couple of seasons is kind of stagnated a little bit. I think he's had injuries, I think he's had a real drop in confidence, but he's trained with the group since I've came in the door, albeit while being on loan at Cove. Um, during the days he wasn't training with them, he was in with the first team group and he was consistently one of the best performers in training. So, you know, I've got real high hopes for Declan next season. He'll certainly get an opportunity under me and then it's up to him whether he grasps it or not. Um, you know, the other guys that you've mentioned, Logan Chalmers, has, uh, was on loan at Inverness a couple of seasons ago, was one of the best wide men in the league. Um, he'll come back into the group as well. Mockery had a great season with Dunfermline. He was one of their star performers in helping Dunfermline get promoted from League One. He's more than ready, I think, to make the step up into championship football. Um, there's other players within the squad as well. Kai Fotheringham helped Sterling Albion get promoted. Uh, Lee McLeod is a really... A, a exciting prospect, I think, in the forward areas. Um, Jack Newman is away at the moment with the Scotland Under-21 group. Delighted that we were able to get Jack's extension agreed um, last week. Um, so there's a lot to be positive about, about the young players coming through. Um, and it's really important for the senior players in the group as well to see these guys coming through behind them and putting a little bit of pressure on those senior players because, you know, if they're not performing, then one of these young lads will step in and take the place in the team. Are you keen to, to get some more sort of reinforcement up front um, towards the, the end of last season? It was about Stephen Fletcher having to play on injured and things from there. Is that something you look for reinforcements in that area as well? I think in the forward areas, actually, we won't be too bad once we have everybody fit. I think, you know, once Tony Watt is, uh, is back and available in four to six weeks' time, obviously Fletcher. Uh, young McLeod, as I mentioned, you got young Miller Thompson as well, who was, you know, hasn't been given a huge amount of opportunity last season, but I tried to get him some minutes in the last game of the season. Um, you know, you got Glenn Middleton now back from injury. Hopefully, with all that behind him, um, you know, Matthew Kujo is another exciting player. Again, dropping down into the championship might actually suit young Matthew. So, you know, there are some very good players, talented players in the forward areas. I think the the area that we need to do better in um, is defensively. I think we need to get reinforcements in there. Obviously, Loy Kayina has gone back to Huddersfield after his loan. Uh, I think as a group, we conceded far too many goals. So I think that's certainly an area within the, the squad that we're looking to strengthen. But, you know, we're having numerous conversations with players at the moment. And as I said, hopefully in the days and weeks ahead, we'll have some real positive news to give to the fans. The winning the league is really going to be the top priority for, for Dundee United next season. But how important is it to, 
to keep the consistency and momentum going by not just aiming to win the league, but aiming to win every single game that then United turn up to play? Yeah, I mean, the, the League Cup campaign starts obviously uh, on the 15th of July. Um, we've got a very difficult group. You know, a very exciting group, I think. Some really big teams involved in it. Some good away days for our supporters to look forward to, but also big clubs that are going to bring good attendances here um, to, to Tanadice, which will hopefully generate a good atmosphere. So that's when the league's, uh, the, the season starts for us, is on the 15th of July. Of course, the priority next season is to get promotion and to win the, the league title in the championship. But we also want to try and go on a a couple of good cup runs as well, you know, and we have to make sure that come the 15th of July, physically we're in good shape and that we're ready to go and try and win that League Cup group stage first. Um, and I think you can get a lot of confidence, you know, the clubs I've been at in the past, you know, I've, it's always been a cup that I've enjoyed and, um, you know, I've been to Hamden on a few occasions in this League Cup. Um, so, yeah, it would be definitely, um, you can definitely pick up a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum throughout those group stages of the of the Premier Sports Cup. And looking at the position from yourself, you, you've taken on the position at Dundee United as manager as opposed to, to head coach. Have you finalised obviously the, the, the team that you want to have here or are you going to be bringing somebody else in to assist you with these additional uh, roles that you, you have now here at Dundee United? Yeah, well I think look, it was important to me to to come in as manager as opposed to head coach because I want to be able to manage my department you know there will always be collaboration between myself the chief executive the owner and you know uh, the board of directors but you know the decisions that made uh, that get made on the football side of things I think it's important that I'm the one making those decisions and I've had assurances from the owner and from the chief executive that that will be the case very I'm very heavily involved in the recruitment side of things obviously I think um, it's a part of the game that I really enjoy it's a very arduous process. It's um, you know a lot of back and forth with players and speaking to agents, and I've got great support from Luigi on that as well. Um, you know, going through hours and hours of of footage and what have you, but um, it's all worth it in the end because if you get that recruitment side of things right, then that can really put you in a good place for the for the season ahead. Uh, there will be one or two other changes getting made behind the scenes as well. As I said, you know, me coming in at that point of the season last season. Give me a really good opportunity to evaluate and assess things, and um, you know I've put forward my ideas to the chairman and to to the board of the the necessary changes that I think need to be made in order for us as a club to move forward on a positive note.